You're listening to the Tax Insights Podcast, where the professionals at Hawkins Ash CPAs break down complex tax topics into bite-sized how-tos. With the higher standard deduction, receiving a tax benefit for charitable giving requires more planning. In this episode, Jeff Dvorak, a tax partner, provides strategies to ensure your charitable giving makes a difference for the community as well as on your tax return. Obviously, there are a lot of great organizations here in our community, a lot of great nonprofits, and uh, you know what? If we could support them all, we would. But unfortunately, that's not how life always works now, is it? Exactly. So I guess we want to kind of focus in and talk more specifically about um, what are some of the benefits besides obviously just supporting the organizations? What are some of the tax benefits that we get as we do charitable giving? Well, and that's what I tell my clients. So I tell them, you know, giving money to charity should be because you want to, not necessarily because of the tax deduction. Okay. But hey, if you can get a tax deduction for it also, it's kind of like a win-win, right? Absolutely. And it and it's getting harder and harder, especially, you know, since a number of years ago, they increased the standard deduction. So a lot more people are taking that standard deduction rather than itemizing. So you almost have to do some pre-planning and some forethought when you're doing your charitable contributions in order to really get a true tax deduction for it. So walk us through that a little bit more. Like, what does that mean, uh, planning ahead for those charity or charitable contributions? Are you saying more do that at the end of the year, or is that something uh, sporadically throughout the year? Yeah, the biggest thing I think is is just to make sure that you're you're doing as much as you can in one year. So kind of bunching those charitable contributions in one year. You know, maybe you something you would give in December the prior year, maybe you do that in January. And then something that you would have done in January of the following year, you do that in December to try and get those two donations, you know, even though the charity is going to get it within days of when they would have normally gotten it, but you get to deduct it because you fit that all into one calendar year and we're able to bunch it. And I was going to say, you were referring to a calendar year, not necessarily a fiscal year for a business, correct? Right. Because, you know, for individuals, everything goes by calendar year. So January 1st through December 31st, whatever you do in that period of time is what you get the deduction for. Okay. So one of the questions then following up with that is getting that deduction on that charitable contribution. Let's say you give $10,000. Do you get a $10,000 deduction on your uh, on your taxes? You You can. Um, but what happens is, you know, when you itemize deductions, you add up all of your medical expenses, you add up your donations, your state taxes, your mortgage interest. And if that's higher than your standard deduction, you get the benefit of whatever's over that amount. So let's say that, you know, we have a $25,000 or so standard deduction for a married couple. If you give $30,000 worth of donations and that's all you do, 5,000 of that is really a tax benefit for you because the other 25 you would have gotten anyway. Gotcha. Are we only talking about a cash contribution or are we also talking about goods and services such as items that we donate to uh, organizations? Yeah, so the, the services part it really isn't because you cannot deduct the donation of your time. But you know, if you have things at home and you give that to Goodwill, Salvation Army, or some of the other great charities that are out there that collect those items, you absolutely can get a deduction for those items that you donate, so the non-cash donations. One last question on that then, because oftentimes when you do that, they, they give you a receipt, right? And they let you put that value on that receipt. I've always wondered, like, walk us through that, because couldn't one technically give a higher value or a lower value? You absolutely could, yeah, because if that part is really on the honor system, unless the IRS comes in and challenges it. And the the goodwills of the world and some of the other charitable entities do a good job on their website of giving you kind of some guidelines on, you know, this is what a shirt is worth. This is what a couch is worth. This is what a table is worth. You know, those kind of things. And so they, they'll give you a really good idea on about what that item is, is worth for a deduction point of view. Gotcha. Jeff, a lot of great information here. Time is running out on today's program of Tax Insight. What is the best way for our listeners to connect with you over at Hawkins Ash? 
I would go to our website, which is hawkinsash.cpa, and go to our CPA HQ section. Awesome, Jeff. Thank you for your time. And we'll talk to you next week here on Tax Insight. This has been Tax Insights, presented by Hawkins Ash CPAs. Learn more online at hawkinsashcpas.com. Hawkins Ash CPAs, part of your business, part of your life.